Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse, and in today's segment I wanted to do a continuation of the video, Who Will Die First When the Shit Hits the Fan. I'm doing this continuation and a little bit of expansion because that video was really important and it got, of course, you know, very heated and, and mixed comments that were, that were brought from it, but I'm okay with that. And I wanted to expand on those categories and actually add another one for you all because the, the groups of people that I had mentioned in the first video, um, I basically laid it out for you and, you told, and I told you, you know, these are the people that are going to die first in any disaster. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, like a zombie apocalypse or something like that, you know. It's observable fact and it's history. So I want to expand on those and give you a, another group. The first group, the first group of people that I mentioned in the first, the Who Will Die First When the Shit's the Fan video, it was the people who were physically disabled. And I want to expand upon that with you because I think a lot of people got the idea that I somehow hate people who can't walk or I hate people who are fat or something like that. It's, it's ludicrous. Um, I'm a nurse. I don't go and help people because I want people to die. That's, that's stupid. Um, I'm putting out difficult and uncomfortable truths because I'm hoping that people will listen and get themselves into a space where they are no longer in that threat group. And thankfully, I've received a lot of positive feedback that many people have heeded those words and, and taken that to heart. Let's talk about why people who are physically disabled um, will die and what we can do about this. Okay. Historically, people's ability to evacuate a threat swiftly has been integral to their overall survival. We have mitigated this in recent years with the advancements in, um, certainly in long-term care, but also in things like, um, like mobility scooters, wheelchairs that are powered, things like that. Um, but also we have people who are living at home longer, uh, who are doing things by themselves and for themselves with the assistance of technology that they couldn't have done in previous years. If the grid goes down, many of these services and many of the things that allow folks who are challenged to live, they're going to be gone. So we've got to ask ourselves, okay, you know, what are the things that are integral to the people in my family? What are those important things and, and how do I address them? And to be honest, people who are morbidly obese, who cannot walk any great amount of time, they're going to be the first on the chopping block, and I'm sorry to put it that way. Um, but this isn't any great surprise, right? People who are morbidly obese die earlier anyway for many different reasons, um, heart disease, etc., etc. But this is... You know, this is common sense, right? Um, also, people who are, are not able to run, um, not able to walk a great amount of time. I'm, I'm thinking an hour. If you can't walk for at least an hour, I would say that that makes your mobility challenged. We need to consider this, okay? And if, if this is somebody that you love, then you need to make provision for them, whether it is um, having a, a different escape route for them if you are envisioning leaving a certain area, or um, consider having that person be with a buddy, if you want to think about it that way. But you have to come to your own conclusions, and you have to problem-solve your own circumstances. I can't do that for you, but I can at least tell you, you know, what to look for, which is try and look at meeting those needs off of the grid. Try and look at increasing um, that person's ability to move. It may be something as simple as losing weight. It may be something as simple as pursuing physical therapy, and it may not be simple. So just do the best that you can second group of people, people who are dependent upon drugs, okay? We have an epidemic in this country of people who are dependent upon opiate and, and narcotic painkillers for many reasons. Back in the day, people self-medicated with alcohol, and it was your crazy Uncle Larry or great Uncle Jim who sat in the back of the family reunion with his hip flask just chugging away. Nowadays, we have doctors prescribing pills for the same overall goal, which is to neutralize pain. So rather than have somebody that you love detox because they don't have their pain meds, I would encourage you to try and problem solve the reasons why the person has pain now. If it is a low back injury especially, um, there are things that you can do to mitigate that with core strengthening. You can figure out the way that is best for you to accomplish that. Fibromyalgia is something we need to talk about here too. Fibromyalgia, they, it's been said, we don't know what causes it. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. It's emotional trauma. So dealing with that emotional trauma is going to be important. There are different ways that you can deal with that. 
I'm a big fan of, of energy psychology and of energy healing if it is done well and appropriately by a practitioner who knows what they're doing. Neuromuscular testing, applied kinesiology, these are things that you can look into. But you got to make that for yourself. you got to make that choice for yourself. But you've got to decrease your dependence on on prescription drugs now. And this isn't something that's just resigned to the zombie apocalypse. This is something that is going to be especially important with the implementation of Obamacare. This is something that's going to be important to you now, wherever you are. If you're dependent upon a substance, you are a slave to that substance. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just telling you how it is. So decrease your dependency upon those substances. And the third group of people that I had mentioned in the Who Will Die First when the shit is the fan, I had mentioned the neo-hippies. And I think people really got the, some people got the wrong idea or missed the boat. I have no problem with people who live close to the earth. I am stating the obvious that pacifism is not going to help you in an armed encounter. Pacifism only helps you in peacetime. And um, I want to put it to you this way. If, if you're okay with not using lethal force to defend yourself, that's fine. But let me throw this at you. Are you willing to let your family and people that you love be sacrificed on the altar of your own, your own ethical convictions? Now think about that. And I've talked to a lot of women who have told me, I don't think that I could kill somebody. I don't feel okay carrying a gun. Okay, fine. Personal decision. You don't think you can pull a trigger to save your own life? Fair enough. But let me flip it around this way. If your children are in danger, or your family, are you going to be able to defend them? You need to think about that. So, and I would encourage you, women especially, um, if you are looking to pursue self-defense, and you're looking for a weapon, don't let a man pick your weapon. You go to the range, or wherever it is that you want to go, rent you a couple different calibers of weapons, try a bunch of them out, see which one fits you the best, and make your own decision. And I'm not hating on men, I'm just saying that if we want our women to be invested in self-defense, they need to make the decisions, and that gives them a sense of being proactive and having ownership of their circumstances. So, not hating on the hippies, but you need to take ownership for your own personal defense. Especially, looping back to our group that is challenged with mobility. If you are not able to swiftly evacuate, then you need to be able to stand your ground and fight. People who are disabled are pretty prime targets for the negative aspects of our society, for the criminal elements of our society. They seek the weak. They seek people who are easy prey. Don't be an easy prey and don't be a victim. So the fourth group. The fourth group I haven't mentioned. If you made it all the way through, then kudos to you. Good job. The fourth group is children. And we don't like hearing this, but this is how it is. Many, many children didn't make it back in the day. Uh, there's lots of different statistics, anywhere from 20 to 40 percent of children didn't reach adulthood. That is a lot. And I'm talking about children who actually were born and survived birth. Okay, I'm not talking stillborn or miscarriage or anything like that. There are many reasons for this. Um, childhood diseases are part of this equation because children have abysmal sanitation standards. There's another part of this that people don't want to own, and that's that children who did not obey and follow directions for their own safety, they made mistakes that cost them their lives. And we're not, unco we, we're not okay with this in our culture because um, many parts of, of certainly the United States society want to embrace the, embrace the UN rights of the child. And it's to our detriment. If your children are not disciplined, if your children do not obey, it could cost them their life. So make sure that your children obey and listen to you. That's up to you as a parent. Being a friend to your child, okay, it can help them sometimes, but being a friend to them and lovingly suggesting that they put down a live wire or that they not pick up something that's hazardous to them, that may not work. So your children need to obey and listen to you. They need to follow directions and follow instructions. Because historically, the ones that didn't, they got themselves into trouble. So make sure your kids aren't one of those groups. Yeah. Pretty sober topic. That's why I'm out here with candles in a nice, relaxing scene. But I wanted to put this information out there for you guys because it is important and it needs to be covered.
Switching gears, I want to let you guys know about the upcoming Medical Prep 101 classes going to a lot of places in 2013 and 2014. Pittsburgh, Denver, White Plains, New York, Yakima, Washington, Las Vegas, Winston-Salem, Richmond, Virginia, Lakeland, Florida, Knoxville, Tennessee, New Orleans, Panama City. It's going to be a lot of places coming up. So I encourage you to check it out at the website, www.thepatriotnurse.com. Check out the course description and the classes and sign up today. Hope it was helpful for y'all. And for now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see y'all later.